This episode of That's What G Said Podcast is brought to you by SarahCandles.com C-E-R-A Candles.com When you visit SarahCandles.com and use the promo code GINO You get 10% off your entire purchase Go check that out And Cindy Carava, full service realtor Website CindyCarava.com If you have any questions at all in real estate Send her an email CindyC.Realtor at gmail.com Happy Thanksgiving everyone We're going to have a Thanksgiving episode here Lots to be thankful for this year We're going to talk a little Deontay Wilder um, NFL Thursday Thanksgiving games Some college football Friday games And then some horse racing for Thanksgiving So we're going to try to get this one in quick Because it's late recording We've been backed up a little bit Sit back and enjoy Happy Thanksgiving everyone Appreciate you spending uh, some time here with us On That's What G Said Podcast I'm going to try to rattle through this one real quick Because I guess I'll I'll do my rant Before I get into the thanks, the, the thanks stuff right? So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll get up on my soapbox for a minute We just spent a lot of time handicapping races this weekend that, uh, This week that got cancelled unfortunately There was a really good card at Zia I was going to record an episode on Tuesday Talk all about the Zia races And then give you all the Thursday races from Aqueduct uh, And from Churchill And a couple from Fairgrounds And then Aqueduct cancelled too So I was trying to figure out what to do And we got Tracked, sidetracked a little bit I added a, a couple things to this show But mainly We will uh, we'll touch on the thir- Thursday th- Thanksgiving football games Some Thursday races And then the Friday college football games So that'll be the, the main focus of the show First and foremost Happy Thanksgiving though For me Thanksgiving is a crazy holiday Now Nine years ago in 2010 I was in the hospital during Thanksgiving I went in for when I had cancer I uh, went in for chemotherapy at the beginning of November They told me I would be in for about Five or six days for each round of chemo And then come back out And I was in the hospital for the entire month of November And this I was Not doing good um, Couldn't eat Got very sick um, Infections all over And I honestly thought I, I did not think I was going to make it So if we, to fast forward to nine years from now And uh, just had a baby um, With a girl that I'm absolutely in love with And very, very lucky to have a, a new family now With my loan with Stephanie So I'm very thankful that Stephanie uh, Was able to get through the birth safe and healthy And we have a very beautiful, happy baby son We're very excited I'm very thankful uh, Great, great Thanksgiving uh, this year With uh, my new family Thanks to all of you for listening You know I, I do this because I enjoy Talking sports Covering pop, you know pop culture uh, Interacting with a lot of uh, Really cool guests And mainly just being able to kind of be a bridge To a lot of you who Have other jobs but who love sports Who like to bet who like to play fantasy And I can spend a little bit more time Because this is my job And it wouldn't be if it wasn't for a lot of you out there who tune in, who download, who comment, who rate and review, who share the show with your friends. We don't always agree on everything. We don't root for the same teams and everything, you know, but I I always appreciate any comments, any questions, anything at all. So if you ever see a post of mine out there on, you know, social media, please, you know, respond to it with a comment. I'll, I'll try to get your... Uh, Opinion read, your take, your game your The horse you like, whatever it is The show to watch Really appreciate each and every one of you uh, Because the, it's, a, it's a team, right? I, I, without you, I wouldn't be able to go To some of the great sponsors that I had And say, hey, you know We have a really good group of listeners And uh, we wouldn't be able to work out deals with, with sponsors and wouldn't be able to do this for a living. And so a big thanks to all of you for listening. A big thanks to 
the great sponsors we've had so far on That's What G Said podcast. Uh, some in particular, uh, Cindy Carava has been with us for quite some time. She's awesome. A call to Post, our friends at Call to Post uh, Racing, really, uh, I think they were also one of our first. Stable Duel, whenever the Stable Duel contests come out, we love playing Stable Duel and, uh, and, and sharing the information with you. And Thrive Fantasy, you can uh, you know, continue to go to Thrive Fantasy and, and get the uh, the promo co- and use the promo code Gino when you deposit ten bucks, you'll get a ten dollar bonus. And then one of the newer ones, SarahCandles.com, perfect timing, holiday season, you know, get the Sarah Candle. So thank you to all the sponsors. And I promise all of you that are listening, whenever you get a show from me, you're always gonna get someone who put all of the time and the effort into it. I if if I'm talking about a game or a race or a show or any topic, I've spent the time. I've you know I'm not, I'm not always going to be right. I'm going to be wrong a hell of a lot, but I'm not going to ever come and, and cheat you guys because I really appreciate. There's so much good content out there, right? There's so many great podcasts. There's so many great TV shows and movies now and all these different streaming services like our time is valuable we can spend it doing so many things and I I'm, I'm I like the podcast format cuz I know that you know you can maybe throw it on in the background uh while you're doing your chore you know your daily errands and chores and stuff like that or you can throw it on when you're in the car somewhere I, I do the same thing with all the shows that I listen to or you know if you're just doing work you can hook it up and, and listen in the background and uh, remember to subscribe YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, we're on Google Podcasts, TuneIn, we're really all over the place, uh, but YouTube, we're trying to start to build the YouTube numbers if we can, so up, uh, continuing to get the, the subscribers built, so head on over to uh, That's What G Said Podcast on YouTube and give us a subscription. Let's get into all the good stuff right now. We mentioned one of our sponsors, Sarah Candle Company. They are at sarahcandles.com, and their goal is to create a candle that is 100% natural, clean burning, and of the highest quality that everyone can enjoy. Here's why they are the best. All natural soy wax, free from the toxins found in paraffin wax, which is used by the other leading brands. The all natural soy wax actually holds the scents better, and it can burn up to 50% longer than traditional paraffin wax. 100% 100% lead-free cotton wicks, completely natural scents, made in micro batches, hand poured to ensure the highest quality. 100% locally sourced, handcrafted in the USA. They have 25 different scents available, three different sizes, fragrance oils infused with natural essential oils. They are the best ingredients, quality packaging, affordable prices, longer burning. None of those toxins, those carcinogens or pollutants that are present in paraffin wax and a lot of the leading brands. This candle company was created by people who love candles. They started out experimenting, just trying to create the perfect candle, and now they have blossomed into Sarah Candle Company. Through research, they were able to to discover the benefits of all natural soy wax. This is a perfect gift for someone. Remember to use that promo code GINO for 10% off your purchase. Like anything, you got to take care of your candle if you want the best burn, keep it clean, and keep it safe. So there are instructions and details on how to keep your candle clean and ensure the perfect burn on the bottom of your candle and on the website, sarahcandles.com. Perfect right now for the holidays. Use that promo code GINO. Big fight over the weekend with Deontay Wilder. He knocked out Luis Ortiz with a uh, single punch in uh, round seven. Wilder now 42-0-1. It was he was getting destroyed. He had not won one round heading into the the seventh. And that's that's the thing with Deontay Wilder, though. His the punches that he packs, his strength of punch is so incredible that he could be losing the entire time and then just quickly. It's like a, a basketball player who can be having a terrible game. They can get hot real quick, score four or five, you know, four or five threes in a row, bucket, 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 bucket. You're right back in it. You're a home run hitter who has been struggling, and then a couple guys get on, and all of a sudden you're up with two on the base or the base is loaded, one swing in the bat, and the game's different game. Wilder, his, you know, they they talk and they compare him a lot to Tyson. I I don't know because we don't really know who he's who he's fought quite yet. But this was the tenth title defense since uh, he won the title in 2015, and now the big rematch with Fury. 
the unbeaten lineal champion Tyson Fury Who's been messing around in WWE I've seen him for a while now He had a match against Braun Strowman And he showed up a few times Ortiz is a tough fighter So this was something that a lot of the people were kind of Talking, uh, trying to talk Wilder out of this fight With a fight with Fury coming up right down the line But it was just a single right cross from Wilder He dropped him uh, Ortiz crawled to his knees He rose at the count of 10 I'm kind of reading through some of uh, Brian Campbell our, our One of our buddies who we, we've talked to a few times uh, About wrestling He covers MMA and, and all sports for CBS And You know th- You just saw the, the strengths and the weaknesses of Wilder are Kind of all on display He said he was thought to take an unnecessary chance By accepting a rematch against a dangerous opponent When he didn't need to And the, it's that Ortiz nearly finished off Wilder in round 7 of their first fight in March 2018 Before Wilder rallied to finish him So same type of thing Ortiz had a technical advantage Kind of a better fighter overall But you just have the knockout power Of Wilder here And I've been Don't claim to be a boxing expert in any means But I've just been a lot more interested in it Because the heavyweight division seems To be More interesting than it's been in quite some time now with you know three or four legitimate contenders that we know out there, so uh, Wilder Fury should be awesome. in uh, In February, that's when uh, that's when this one should be coming up. NFL Thursday, Thanksgiving, three games on Thanksgiving. Uh, for me, overall, not a good week. Last week, uh, two and four. But you know what? It's not one of the wing the weeks that really stings because it did, there really weren't any bad beats. I, we're going to lose and you're going to have some losing weeks You're going to go up and down It's the games that you feel like you should have won And whether it be you know, Something bad happens late Something that shouldn't quite happen That's a little out of the norm Or a bad ref call Which I guess has become more of the norm as of late It just wasn't a week where I had bad beats The games that we lost We got crushed We were just dead wrong And that's how I When I I like to be wrong I like to be way wrong Because I trust my opinion I trust the work that we do And when you when you do that You know that hey You're going to be wrong Sometimes You want to make sure That the times you're wrong You're just wrong You lose The times when you're right You're cl- you're able to To take advantage and, and win 36 and 31 overall Two plays in the three games But let's go through The three games first The opening uh, The morning game Is the Bears at Detroit it Was three and a half the Bears are favored by Now it's four the over under somewhere between 37 and a half to 38 and a half this has moved a few points mainly because the quarterback situation for Detroit they have one healthy quarterback at the moment David Blau and he's an undrafted rookie Stafford has broken bones now in his back since November 10th Jeff Driscoll has a hamstring injury he's 0 and 3 as a starter and the concern is that even if he plays his strength has actually been that he can run the ball and, and scramble a little bit. In his three starts, he's had five carries for 37 yards, eight carries for 51 yards, and nine carries for 63 yards. You know, not anything crazy, not Lamar Jackson type numbers, but enough to keep the defense on their toes a, a little bit. So if he's not able to, to run at all and he has to drop back as just a drop, like a pocket passer, he's not good enough to be successful against the Bears defense that. Let's be honest, the Bears defense isn't quite as good as we thought they would be And they're not as good as they were last year That number one overall defense who had an incredible turnover ratio They're currently the number six defense So they're not bad, they're just not that unbelievably vaunted defense The Lions have lost seven of their last eight after a really promising start Remember they had that weirdly they were up and then they had the weird tie in week one. Then they beat the Chargers, they won at Philly, so they're two and one. And then they really got screwed over in back to back games uh, by by the officials. They should have won the game against Kansas City and they should have won the game against Green Bay. They easily could have been five and zero. Oh, the Lions could have been five and zero oh right then. It's it felt like the game against Minnesota, the Vikings was really the turning point. I liked Detroit in that game. And they ended up losing, they were back and forth, up and down And it's kind of one play in the middle of the game Gave Minnesota the opportunity to put a couple scores together And they lose 42-30 to go to 2-3-1 and one. They come back and they beat the Giants Then they lose a close game to the Raiders Where they couldn't get into the end zone late They lose just a few weeks ago at the Bears 
with Driscoll making his first start 20 to 13. They lost to the Cowboys and then they lost at Washington. They're now 3 7 and 1. But overall, they still have a better DVOA than the Bears, even with those bad Driscoll games in there. Bears have the number six ranked defense, but the number 27 ranked offense. The only teams that have a worse offense, Pittsburgh, Miami, the Jets, the Bengals, and the Redskins. And you'll notice all of those teams have had multiple quarterbacks playing throughout the year. Roethlisberger got hurt for Pittsburgh and they've had a a tough time Rudolph has been awful when he played That's why they're putting Hodges back in this weekend Miami's gone back and forth between Rosen and Fitzpatrick And the Jets, Darnold had the mono issue for a few weeks and he missed The Bengals have bounced back and forth between quarterbacks And the Redskins did the same So they're the only team that's actually had like a legitimate quarterback That they thought was the quarterback of their future with Trubisky Who's just been atrocious these two teams had such a good start to the year that, you know, the Lions we mentioned, they were 2 0 1. The Bears were 3 1. They lost the opening week to Green Bay. They went at Denver. Remember, that was a bad officiating at the end of the game. They should not have won that game. Did, no way they were able to get that kickoff. They won on Monday Night Football against the Redskins, who were just horrible that night. And then they won in a weird game against the Vikings, 16 6. And since then, the Bears have lost in London to the Raiders against the Saints. In a game that was not even as close as it looked on paper with 36-25. They lost against the Chargers, 17-16. They lost against the Eagles, 22-14. They won against the Lions with Driscoll. Then they lost at the Rams. And then they they beat the Giants. The Bears are 5-6 now overall. They're 3-8 in their over-unders. So they've only had three of their games go over, eight go under. And they are 3-8 against the spread. Not very good as people just projected the Bears to be much better this year. The Lions are 4 and 7 against the spread and they are 7 and 4 in their over/unders, but remember a lot of that even came with Stafford earlier in the year when they had a better team. And you know, it's it's unfortunate because you look at a team like the Lions who they're missing their starting quarterback, their starting running back, possibly tight end who may be probable now with Hawkinson, and they have a bad defense, their bottom 3 against the pass. Trubisky Has been under 200 yards passing in three of his last four games But he's coming off his biggest game of the year with 278 yards against a bad Giants D And this Lions D is not very good either They really should just feed Allen Robinson He had 10 targets last week, 6 receptions, 131 yards The Bears' last five games have gone under They're, They're still a good defense, just not that turnover machine They were with Fangio Cleo Mack, he he had only two sacks over a seven-game spurt. A couple weeks ago, Trubisky looked like he was injured against the Rams. He had a hit pointer, they said. Seemed fine, though, in Week 12. They No real injuries to speak of throughout most of the year for the Bears, except for the, the couple games that Trubisky missed. But let's be honest, it's not really like a step down to Chase Daniel. The Bears have only scored on one of 11 opening drives this year. But they've scored touchdowns on their first drive of the second half in five straight games. It's been really tough to use like Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones and some of the Detroit receivers because you just don't know what the consistency you're going to get with the quarterback play. They could be starting Bo Scarborough and David Blau on a short week. And really zero excuses for the Bears in this game. They're coming off a week when their offense looked a little bit better. They're playing against a depleted Lions team that they just saw and they just beat three weeks ago. Driscoll, who they're hoping will play, he was not good last week. He had three interceptions and he basically lost them the game. Now we start to wonder what is Matt Patricia's future and what is his fate? Because Detroit is not, maybe you give him a mulligan because Stafford got injured. But there were a few games this year that felt like they were kind of big games after some adversity and the Lions were not able to pull through. No play in this game for me. I just, I mean, I I would play the Bears and and if you're playing parlays or something, lean to the money line. I just can't play and trust a Bears team. I just, I couldn't to to cover more than a field goal in this spot, but I could never play Detroit here with uh, with all that they're missing. Cowboys, Bills, it looks like the Cowboys are 7, 7.5 seven uh, point favorites against the Bills The over-under in this game is 46 it, I like the Bills in here, so I can f- I found 7.5 Look around for that if you can Take the 7, if not 
it's anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half. So I guess if you like the Cowboys side and and you want to, tr- you can probably find it under a touchdown somewhere. You know, I prefer the Bills at at plus the seven mainly because the this is going to be a massive week for the Cowboys. First of all, Jerry Jones comments about coaching. Jason Garrett is more on the hot seat than he's ever been. He just coming. With Urban Meyer, quote the quote favorite to be uh, the next Dallas Cowboy coach, he's coming off another miserable, miserable week where they were down thirteen six. It was fourth and seven from the eleven, and they kicked a field goal. So they still needed a touchdown with six minutes left to go in the game. They even got the ball back and had another chance, and then there was a terrible tripping call against the Cowboys. Like I'm not saying this was all the Cowboys very easily still could have won that game with the. If it wasn't for some poor officiating, but it's not that they lost, it's how they lost. They just looked so poor against a Patriots team that hasn't really looked very good the last couple of weeks either. And a Patriots offense that has not been very good. This was a, a top tier Cowboys offense who couldn't do much against a very good Patriots defense. You'd figure that the Cowboys would be able to move the ball a little bit. It was not the case. These are actually both playoff teams right now though the bills are eight and three they've had they have that the easiest strength of schedule in the league the cowboys in in their most recent game not looking good they went three and out on two of their first three drives they had a block punt by the patriots gave them an easy touchdown short field and then another takeaway and the pats are early and just easily up 10-0 tory aikman was not happy in that game so the Cowboys are now six and five. They're seven and four against the spread. The Bills are eight and three. They're seven three and one against the spread. But the Bills are actually nine three and one against the spread. Their last thirteen games. Cowboys are eight and two in their last ten home games, but only three six and one against the spread when they're seven to seven and a half point favorites. Buffalo took a big jump up last week from number fourteen. Uh, to number fourteen overall in DVOA. They have the number nine defense, so a pretty good defense. And the key for the Bills is that Josh Allen has not been turning the ball over as much. And that's why I'm going to play the Bills in this spot. Because I think the 7.5 if you we found is too much. And even 7, under the touchdown, I would probably stay away. If it was like 5, I, I'd probably go more to, more to the Cowboys. But Josh Allen with only one interception in his last 6 games. He has 12 touchdowns and 2 interceptions only in his last 7. And his last 3 games, he has 235 passing yards a game. 46 plus rushing yards a game He has 5 passing touchdowns And 3 rushing touchdowns And he's actually played You look and you go, oh okay, he played Miami, Denver And Cleveland, well, Miami Sure, they're bad, but Cleveland Actually has the number 13 overall defense In the league, and Denver has the number 12 Dallas has the number 19 So Buffalo should be able to move the ball Playing against a defense that has Not been good, and so That's why I think they keep it close We take the Bills in here Last week the Cowboys were 2 for 13 on third down And 0 for 2 in the red zone And a lot of what happened with the Cowboys last week was weather The weather was not good So it was going to be an ugly kind of slog game anyways But their deep And the Cowboys offense I expect to bounce back a little bit And and it, it probably won't be easy for this Bills defense to shut them down but the Cowboys defense has just not been good And that's why I feel with it, with Josh Allen Running the ball a little bit better lately Not turning the ball over They're running the ball better with Singletary and with Gore And the Bills just kind of look like a I didn't think they were a very You know Sexy playoff type team earlier In the year I played them and against them Many times and their, their DVOA Was one of the worst uh, up until just a few weeks ago, but they really have improved, and it feels like their offense is getting into a, a, a nice swing here. So these two teams have just beaten some m- awful teams, though, and that's why I think it's tough to say, you know, that Dallas is some great team. Look at who the Bills have beat. Look at Dallas. The Bills have beat the Jets when Darnell got hurt. The Giants with Eli, they beat the Bengals, the Titans in a game where the Titans just missed a ton of field goals and extra points. And the Dol- oh, I think they missed four field goals that game No extra points They beat the Dolphins, the Redskins, the Dolphins, and the Broncos And Dallas has beaten the Giants with Eli The Redskins, the Dolphins, the Eagles, the Giants, and the Lions We're not exactly talking about beating Murderer's Row here Lions with Driscoll, Eagles that were a little bit banged up But that was probably Dallas's best game When they just kind of beat up on the Eagles Bills Plus the seven and a half year. I think Dallas wins this by a field goal. Bills plus the seven and a half.
plus seven's fine. Final game is the Saints minus seven at the Falcons. The Saints got lucky last week in a 34-31 win against Carolina. They had terrible late execution from the uh, from the Panthers, or else they would not have won. They wouldn't have won the game. Panthers missed a field goal from 28 yards. They missed two extra points. They could not score a touchdown. I think with six chances late in kind of like a goal sit goal to go situation. the The Saints' O line is banged up, missing a couple. Uh, with Pete and Armstead not playing against the Saints, uh, against the Falcons a few weeks ago, Breeze was sacked six times, and Atlanta beat up New Orleans. And I don't think that New Orleans is going to be looking past Atlanta. I just don't think they're quite playing well right now. And this isn't a game that they're going to be circling and really getting up for. Whereas Atlanta is going to be really up for this game at home, kind of a. On Thanksgiving, they have nothing else to play for this season except for maybe ruining uh, a game or two for the Saints. So I like the Atlanta Falcons to cover in here, plus seven. I think the Saints just squeak by again. You're going to get Devontae Freeman back for a Falcons team who only had 57 yards rushing last week. This is going to help their run game quite a bit, and, and it's going to help them have more a, a more balanced attack. It's, it's weird to say that I think... I think Atlanta, who was coming off of a couple really good games where they beat New Orleans and they beat Carolina, it almost looked like they just took Tampa for granted last week, which how can the Falcons take anyone for granted when they're awful and inconsistent too? But Tampa can smack you around a little bit when their offense fires, and their offense was firing last week. I think the Saints, again, will keep it close, but I don't know if they're going to cover on the road. I think Saints win by same type of thing as in Dallas. I think Saints win by a field goal. So I'm hoping that we get a couple good games at least. The Saints were on the wrong end of another uh, ref call last week. There was a challenge of a a pass interference that Carolina actually won. And how ironic is this? Because the Saints are the reason why that that rule was put into play because of the awful call that was missed in the Rams game last year in the playoffs. And now it's basically not been called or overturned in any of the challenges this year, except it did happen against the Saints. So this is a defense for New Orleans. It's given up more yardage the last few weeks than normal, over 315 yards in three straight games. Keeping it close with Atlanta plus the seven. So the two plays will take Atlanta plus the seven and the Bills plus the seven and a half. We'll uh, kind of steer clear of that first game because I, I could see anything happening. If you're going to play some kind of a parlay, I would I would only take the chalk, the Bears, their money line because I don't, I don't really trust them with their offense and with, and with Trubisky. Head on over to Thrive Fantasy. Download the app right now. It is a daily fantasy app for prop bets. If you like to play, you know, any kind of daily fantasy, if you like to bet on the games, if you like to bet on prop wagers, This is really cool. You can get involved for a few bucks. You can get involved for a couple hundred dollars in different contests that you want, head-to-heads, all sorts of different sports. It's not just football. You can see me in there all the time. My name is That's What G Said. And if you use my promo code right now, G-I-N-O, I actually get a little cut, and you will get a bonus. So use the promo code Gino. Download 10 bucks, or download the app. Deposit 10 bucks. You'll get a $10 bonus right back, and I'll get a cut. So help put a little little food in the... On the table for Milo, huh? 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 It's holiday time. Thrive Fantasy. Download the app. Use the promo code GINO. Deposit 10 bucks. You'll get the $10 bonus. And I get a chunk back. College football. Bad week last week again. um, We've just had a bad overall college football season now. We're 18 and 21. We had a good week two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Bad last week. It's just kind of been good, bad, good, bad. That's why we've hovered around... 500. We haven't been good enough to win money. We've actually had a few money lines, so we're probably closer to even overall when it comes to winning and loss, uh, wins and losses overall money. But we haven't been bad enough for you to play against, so we're just doing nothing. But we're going to get back on the right track this week. Four plays between Thursday and Friday. The Thursday game, Mississippi versus Mississippi State. You can find Ole Miss plus the three out there. This is a rivalry game, and Ole Miss can keep Mississippi State out of a bowl game. Ole Miss has not had a strong year, but they've been playing better lately. In their last six weeks, they've really started to improve. In fact, in their last seven games, they're 5-1-1 one, one against the spread. They lost by seven to Texas A&M. They lost by six at Auburn, and they scored 37 points against LSU. You turn around and you see Mississippi State. 
They're 2-5 and five against the spread as of late, and the only games they covered was against Arkansas and Abilene Christian. Look at Ole, Ole Miss's losses. Their losses were to Memphis, who's a very good team. We're going to talk about Memphis again in, in just a second. Cal, who was, number t- who was a top 25 team at that time. And actually, Ole Miss got screwed at the end of that game on the final play. They should have scored a touchdown and been able to have a chance to go for two and tie the game, but they didn't get that opportunity. It's a terrible call by the refs. They lost at Bama, at Missouri, to Texas A&M, at Auburn, and LSU. It's really hard to fault Ole Miss for some of those losses. And Mississippi State's losses aren't miserable either. They did lose to Kansas State, at Auburn, at Tennessee, LSU, and Bama. But their last four losses were by double digits, and they just beat an Abilene Christian team. Mississippi State has wins against Louisiana and Southern Miss and Kentucky. Ole Miss could get a big boost from running back Scotty Phillips coming back. I just think Ole Miss is a better team in here, so I'll take the three points that you can get. Ole Miss plus the three in here for your Thanksgiving Egg Bowl. The second game, the next three games are going to come on Friday. Cincinnati plus 11.5 at Memphis. Cincinnati is a good team. I think Memphis is a pretty good team too, but this is just way too much. This, I, I feel like this game should be more like seven and it's a 11, it's up to 11, 11 and a half you can find in some places. And I'm going to take that 11 and a half because I like the Cincinnati side. Cincinnati's lone loss was against Ohio State. They've won nine straight since. They've been holding opponents to 19.9 points per game. If you take the Ohio State game out, it's, uh, it's under 18 points per game. And it's possible that there might be some rain which means it, I think it slows the game down and it slows the high-powered Memphis offense down. So you have a strong defense from Cincinnati against a strong offense from Memphis. Can Cincinnati score enough points to stay in the game? I think so, and I think there are a couple key factors. Cincinnati is top 10 in the nation with 23 takeaways, so they're a team that can win the turnover battle, and they are... A team that is very, very efficient. They've actually scored on 35 of their last 38 trips to the red zone. So we're talking about a really good defense and a very efficient offense. I think that's enough to keep them within double digit points in here. Look for the 11 and a half. Anything over 10 is way too much. Mem- the, what's interesting about this game is if Memphis wins, then these two teams will have a rematch in the conference championship next week. And if Memphis Cincinnati is already locked in their spot in the conference title. So they don't need this game as much, but I don't think they want to play Memphis again in back-to-back weeks. I think Cincinnati is going to play really well. I I like their team uh, that I've watched most of this year. They've beat me a few times when I've played against them, and I think they have a good enough defense. We talked about that efficient offense and how good they've been in the red zone lately. That's going to be key for Cincinnati to keep this game close. Virginia plus the three against Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech has beaten Virginia 15 straight times. And the winner of this game will face Clemson for the conference title. Virginia Tech has a strong defense, but they're going to have to deal with Virginia quarterback Bryce Perkins, who can run and pass. He has over 2,600 yards passing and 520 yards rushing. Virginia Tech, strong defense, though. They've only allowed 17 points over the last three games, but I like a running QB against a strong defense because they can ad lib and it's, you can't necessarily game plan for someone like Perkins who can take off. Virginia's D has actually been pretty good too. They've held everyone but North Carolina to under 400 yards this year. They lost a tight one to Virginia Tech last year. They were up by 10 in the fourth and they lost in overtime when on a fumble. Perkins was only 14 for 29 in that game, but he did run for 112 yards. So this is, that's the kind of game I'm, I'm hoping he's a little more efficient passing the ball, but he can run all over in a game that's huge for them at the end of the year. They want to get into the conference title and, and have a chance against Clemson. Virginia's 5-0 and at home. I'm expecting that big Perkins game. Both of these teams are playing really well. Virginia Tech won six of their lost seven. Their lone loss in that stretch was to Notre Dame. Virginia's lost four of uh, has won four of five. This should be a really good game. Let's go Virginia. We we'll take the the home dog plus the three at home against Virginia Tech. Final game: Texas Tech plus ten against Texas. This is the biggest spread between these two teams in the last five years. Both of these teams play a ton of close games in this particular season. Texas Tech has four losses by three points or less. That's the most for them in a year since 1985. They lost 
33-30 in double overtime to Baylor. They lost 37-34 to Kansas. They lost 33-31 to TCU and 30-27 to to Kansas State. And then you look at Texas. They won 36-30 against Oklahoma State. They lost 34-27 to Oklahoma. They won 50-48 against Kansas. They won 27-24 against Kansas State. And they lost 23-21 against Iowa State. Both of these teams love to play close games. The road team in this series has won the last five years. You're getting up to 10, 10 and a half, some spots. So I, I, if you can find 10 and a half, take it. I couldn't find it. I found the 10 for Texas Tech. Texas can't make the Big 12 title now after their embarrassing loss last week when they barely were able to score a touchdown late in the game to make it look more respectable on paper. It was not close. They got shellacked by Baylor. Texas Tech can't make a bowl, but they can beat a rival, and they can get up for this game. The Texas offense is struggling. They've scored less than 30 in five of their last six. They have no real motivation to blow Tech out. Their wins against Kansas and Kansas State were on last-second field goals. I just think this is going to be a close game or a game that even if Texas is up big, Texas Tech can can get you you know with a, a late backdoor cover here. Texas Tech plus the 10. Four plays in college between the Thursday-Friday games, and then we'll come back and uh, on our next episode that we're going to record on Friday night. We'll talk about college football Saturday, NFL Sunday, and some horse racing for the weekend. So the four plays for college, Ole Miss plus the 3, Texas Tech plus the 10, Cincinnati plus 11.5, and, and Virginia plus the 3. Good luck in those games. Let's get into the horse racing. We'll close things out with some plays for Thursday. Before we do, I want to let you know about another sponsor. That's what G said podcast. Cindy Carava. Dot com and full service realtor Cindy Carava. I always try to mention her when I'm talking horse racing. A lot of you that are horse racing fans, you know the name Carava. Uh, uh, she is the wife of trainer Jack Carava, who's been an, an awesome trainer and a mainstay on the Southern California circuit for over 30 years. I've known Cindy for over a decade. The, one of the most honest people you will ever meet. She's genuine. She's sweet. She'll tell you whatever you need and she'll answer any questions that you have. She'll Connect you with the right people if you're trying to improve your home, if you're looking to sell your home, if you're looking to lease, if you're looking to buy. Uh, maybe you, in those improvements, you're you want she can contact you know gardeners, landscapers, uh, people that she uses in her own home. She can help get you pre-approved for a loan if that's something that's been an issue for you, and and contact you with some lenders. It works out of the San Gabriel Valley, North San Diego County, so she's all around Santa Anita, and then down in Del Mar, Solana Beach, Rancho Santa Fe. You can find out information about her all over the internet, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, reviews about her on Yelp and Zillow. Best way, though, is to send her an email, cindyc.realtor at gmail.com. If you check out the website, cindycarava.com, you can get all of that contact information. And she can just help you if you're curious to find out how much your home is worth. She'll get you a, a free market analysis of your home's value. Make sure to let her know that Gino said hello and uh, cindycarava.com for all of your real estate needs. So you heard me rant. I was on my soapbox a little bit. We we were going to give you Zia Park for two, uh, for Wednesday, and I was going to record this show on, on Tuesday. And then there was a bunch of scratches, and there was a, a virus at Remington, and the, the card just kind of got decimated. And then Aqueduct, I loved the Aqueduct card for Thanksgiving. And then the Aqueduct uh, card was canceled just earlier because of a bunch of wind, so that's unfortunate. So we'll try to just get through quickly. Uh Fairgrounds and Churchill, and then I'll come back for the weekend with a couple plays for you from uh, from Saturday and Sunday for uh, some of the other tracks. I didn't want to get too far ahead. I, I was going to start and get into the Friday races and then do some Friday Aqueduct and some Friday Churchill, but I don't want to get too far ahead now with the cancellations the next few days and the way the weather has been, so we'll try to take it day by day. Best thing I can say is follow me on Twitter. It's me, Gino B, and I'll try to tweet out if uh, some of the horses I like, as long as the weather is permitting and they stay on the grass and it's not sloppy track. So best best thing to do is always give a follow on social media, on Twitter, at it's me, Gino B, on Twitter, and I'll, I'll go through some of the races I'm playing, you know, Thursday, Friday, and, and through the weekend. So two at Fairgrounds that we liked. Fairgrounds seventh race on Thursday. The 
number one, where she told me to go, I think is more of a late exotic single than uh, necessarily a horse to bet to win. I, I want to use in your late exotics if you're playing or maybe to build an exotic ticket around. And then in the eighth race, let's talk about the number six, Another Mystery. I think anything around five to one is worthy of a win wager. Someone got hooked three, four deep all the way around last time out, was just two off, was in the clear, was close up, was asked for a run, and was up to within a length, was three deep at the top of the stretch, but just had nothing left when the real running started after that wide journey, expecting a really good effort from the another the number six, another mystery at five to one at fairgrounds. So the seventh race, uh, the number one, maybe a horse to build some of your late exotics around where she told me to go. And then a horse to bet to win in the eighth race, the number six, another mystery at five to one. Let's go to Churchill, get your past performances out for Thanksgiving, Churchill Downs. Second race, we're going to go to the number two, Ballard High. It's going to be the second start off a four and a half month break for Ballard High. And we're looking at the last start at Churchill in the slop. Slow start from the rail, was outrun a little bit. Scorts was 12 lengths out of it and really started to roll. Kept to the inside, then got completely stopped. Was shut off by a tiring rival. Had to alter course to the three path after losing all momentum. Still was able to get second late. I think Ballard High, who ran behind who? Where she told me to go, who we just talked about it at Fairgrounds. So I like this race. Look, and you you look at Ballard High's overall form as of late. Put a line through that race back in June that sent him to the bench for a few months. Overall, his form is really nice. He doesn't have to be so far back. He has a little bit more tactical speed than he showed, and he will be a little closer stretching back out from seven furlongs to the mile and a 16th. Ballard High, the number two in race number two at Churchill Downs. Make a win wager if you can get five to one. Make sure to toss in all of your exotics. Let's get you to Churchill race number five. Uh, remember the horse Mucho, who was very highly regarded early on in his career. He was favored in the grade one hopeful when he was a runner up that day. And he seems like he's starting to get into really nice form right now. I think he's kind of figuring himself out. He looks like he's a pretty good sprinter. I think this is a great spot for Mucho. He missed a break last time out. He was seven lengths off, but he always was traveling well. He waited. He angled out widest of all at the top of the lane. He was asked for some run. He responded nicely, and he just got up for the win. I think it's a he's going to have to deal with Captain Scotty, who has speed, but Mucho has shown now, has speed, has the ability to come from off the pace. He came from farther back than he ever has last time out. So he's a really versatile horse as he's getting a little bit older and maturing. And I just love the way he was running. He just looked like a horse who's figuring things out and a, and a confident animal. Eight Town might be an interesting horse to toss in some of your exotics. Wouldn't be shocked to see him take a nice step forward because he's coming out of that same race that I like. And he a race that he absolutely needed last time out. So maybe include him underneath or however you're approaching the... Uh, your plays throughout the Churchill card. The sixth race, let's go to the number one fast boat. I like his last couple. What's interesting to me is, so he beats Texas Wedge on October the 12th. He was favored in that race on October the 12th over Texas Wedge. Why is he 12-1 to 1 on the morning line and Texas Wedge is 9-2? to 2? Just because Texas Wedge has a race in between that he won? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I think the one can save ground. He'll come rolling from the inside. He went right by Texas Wedge last out when Wedge got the jump on him too. There were no excuses in that race. Looks like there's going to be speed in this race from Caratari, Gray Attempt, Pablo Del Monte, Battle Station, Bound for Nowhere. All will have speed. Some of the races that Fast Boat's coming out of. He's looking for his third win in a row. He defeated Tiger Blood two starts back, who's a 15-time winner, who's won three of his last four. And he was behind Totally Boss, who has won four of his last six and was only 5-1 to one in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Fast Boat, the number one. We'll play a win wager on this one if we can get anything over 4-1 to one on Fast Boat. I think that line is off, and I'm expecting him to come down a little bit. The ninth race. Let's get to the number one, Moonlit Garden. I respect a couple in here. Go Google yourself. Uh... 
My Lady Curlin, Sally's Curlin, Radikowski, they're all in nice form. I wouldn't be shocked if any of them win. But I think you can get really good value with the, the one Moonlit Garden if you can get a price of anything over like 6 to 1. Look back to September the 14th when she was right behind Go Google Yourself and was only beaten the neck that day. It was a slow start. She was back to the inside, five off. She was traveling really well behind horses, and she moved right up onto the heels of arrival. She had nowhere to go, was waiting for room, angled out and around, but it was too late. Just missed, and it was a nice gallop out. She tried hard all the way. Last time out, she had a brutal start. She was bumped and she was squeezed. She had no shot after that start. She still ran third. I like her a lot in here at a mile and eighth. She's kind of a grinder. I don't know if she's got like a real big, huge turn of foot. And so at a mile and an eighth, it's it's going to be beneficial for her to be able to save all the ground. I like Juro jumping back aboard. So let's play the one Moonlit Garden in race number nine at Churchill Downs in the Fall City Handicap. If we can get anything over six to one, we'll make a win wager. The 10th race, the number 10, Grit and Curiosity. He's not really done a whole lot wrong in his career. He was a fine second in his debut, was on the slop. And and if you look, he's been a little bit unlucky because he hooked a sloppy racetrack, sloppy racetrack, sloppy racetrack his first three times. And then he was on the grass the last two. He won pretty nicely at in at Indy. I think it was a good spot for him to go get a confidence-building win. He was three deep going into the turn. He was three wide all the way around the racetrack. He gave up a ton of ground. He was kind of ridden like a dirt horse in a dirt race. And he was just the best animal that day. Now he cuts back. He goes back to the dirt. He's trained over this track. I think if you toss the January or the June race, the June 23rd race that sent him to the bench for a couple months, we have a horse that's shown ability from day one, put it all together, and he's been training over this racetrack. So I, I really don't have any issues with how he's going to take to this dirt. Peter Miller's making all the right calls so far at Churchill Downs. All of his horses are firing well. The number 10, Grit and Curiosity. Anything over 7-2 to two will play this guy to win. The 11th race, we're going to go to the number 10, Smart Shot. And if Starship Jubilee shows up, they're all running for second, right? Like if she shows up with her A game. If you take her out of this race, it's a very evenly matched field that I think Smart Shot has a big chance. I mean, Smart Shot is actually outfinished. Lamari and and Calio and some of the common rivals in this race today. If you look last time out, Smart Shot saved ground in six, was inside, was about 10 lengths off early on. Angled off the rail uh, with an early move, was in between, but then she ran into some traffic. She had to wait, then she had to angle down to the inside in a really tight spot. She never got a chance to kind of get let loose and really get the motor running. And she got up for second late, but with a clear journey, things could have been a lot different in that spot. I don't like the comment line that says hung late. I just think it was kind of the inside, the tight spot that was maybe a little discouraging for her. Smart shot. Include her in all of your exotics. Maybe you want to hook her up with the 11 Starship Jubilee. I'm going to make a win wager on anything over 8-1. to one. On smart shot. Then to close things out in the 12th race at Churchill Downs, we're going to go to the three Savvy. Savvy debuted, was an okay fourth, but was an unprepared start, was last early, was eight plus lengths off, moved to the inside, and was just not in a great spot, had nowhere to go, got shuffled back, was waiting on heels, angled to the outside, and really got into his best stride late. He showed improvement. And I think he's going, or he showed, he showed some late interest, and I think he's going to improve a ton second time out for Wilkes. So the number three, Savvy. Anything over four to one, we'll make a win wager on Savvy. Make sure to use him in all of your exotics. So a little quick run through to the Churchill Downs races. Second race, number two, Ballard High. Fifth race, the number four, Mucho. Sixth race, the number one, Fast Boat. Ninth race, the number one, Moonlit Garden. Tenth, the number ten, Grit and Curiosity. Eleventh, the number ten, Smart Shot. Twelfth, the number three, Savvy. Couple quick hitters. I started that Friday handicapping I mentioned, so I'll give you a couple that I had at Aqueduct for the 29th. In the first race is really the one I like the most uh, that I had gotten through, was the six, Am Impossible. The blinkers go on. In her debut... It was a fine start. She was mid-pack, but then she was down on the inside, and she ended up getting shuffled. She was in traffic. She ends up getting shuffled all the way back to last. She angles to the outside and around. Then she has to angle back in between, 
and she really started to to roll at the top of the lane, showed some nice interest, ran very well in spots, and then was kind of geared down late because she couldn't finish any better. I'm expecting a much better effort from Am Impossible. I liked what I saw from that filly in the debut. Make sure to use her in all of your exotics. Anything over five to two, bet her to win on Friday. This is Aqueduct for eleven twenty nine, and then in the sixth race, Aqueduct eleven twenty nine. Uh, just make sure to throw the the nine into most of your exotics in there. That is the Worthington. I can't even read my own writing sometimes. Uh, Lady Worthington, who I'm just expecting. Johnny V's back aboard. Second off the short break. I actually liked the effort last time out. I I think she's going to be a little more fit. She'll have a little more bottom with with the race under her belt last time out. So Lady Worthington, throw her in um, some of your exotics there. So those two for you at Aqueduct for Friday the 29th. The 6th Am Impossible in the 1st. And in the 6th race... The number nine, Lady Worthington. Best of luck. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll be back with another episode for you in just a few days where we discuss all the stuff happening over the weekend. Big weekend races. We'll go through some college games for Saturday and the NFL Sunday slate. Don't forget to subscribe on all of the platforms, folks. Have a great Thanksgiving. Be safe. Enjoy with your families. Eat up. Happy holidays. 